Welcome to the Reliability Tutorial. This tutorial will be covering reliability in logic bots, what this means, what the effects are, and how to design a robot with reliability in mind. In most puzzle games, you get given a problem to solve. You then come up with an answer, and it's either right or wrong. Logic bots is not so black and white. You may find that some solutions you come up with work some of the time. This can be confusing and frustrating when you're used to black and white outcomes. For example, on a line following level, your robot may fail on the third corner. You then retry the level with the exact same robot and your robot fails on the second corner. You then retry again and your robot completes the whole level. At first glance, this may seem like the reason your robot fails is random and there is something wrong with the game, but as I will explain, this is not the case and the issue resides with your logic bot design itself. So what's happening? LogicBots uses a non-deterministic physics engine. This means that the physics calculations that are going on in the background are very slightly different every time. For instance, the force a wheel exerts will vary very, very slightly each physics frame. This can cause small changes in your robot direction, but because of the butterfly effect and the fact there are 1000 physics calculations per in-game second, this can cause your robot to take an entirely different path. This behavior is exactly what you'd experience in the real world. You'll find that small changes, such as the torque of your motors changing as they heat up, tiny vibrations due to someone walking nearby, will cause slight deviations in your robot path, which again will be magnified by the butterfly effect. To show this effect, I'm using a line following robot. Now these levels appear early in the game, and it's easy to show the effect. However, this effect will be present no matter what your logic bot is doing. Let's now see the effect in action. Okay, so here's a straight line. Let's see how LogicBot follows the line. This LogicBot is using the same line tracking technique as the walkthrough tutorial. As you can see, it's bouncing from left to right as it follows in a random pattern. Let's speed this up and see how it finishes. Okay, so in this particular run it's finished towards the centre of the line. Let's restart and see if it does the exact same thing again. Just like last time, our, our robot starts by going to the left and now it's going to start bouncing. Let's speed it up again. And... We're going to finish off to the right slightly this time. It was only a slight difference, but it was definitely different. Let's try and get a, let's try it again see if we can get more extreme result. You may notice that this is t bouncing on a different path down the line each time. Okay, so that one's clearly different. We were towards the right hand side of the line there when we finished, and then the robot veered off to the left after it left the line. Now let's look at the robot as it goes around a track. Okay, so here we've got the robot on a simple track. It's just some right angle corners, some left right angle corners, and some right right angle corners. Let's see how a robot reacts. As you can see, it's bouncing along the straight line again. And it's got around the first corner successfully. And the second corner. And the third corner. Ah, and there we go. Our robots got stuck on the fifth corner. Let's restart and see if we get the same result.
So around the first corner, just like last time. And the second corner. Now we're on a roll. Will it get stuck at this corner again? Nope, this time we've made it round. That's already different. And we're stuck again. So as you can see, it got stuck on a different corner this time. So at first glance, you might be thinking, this looks completely random. But if we look closer, there's actually a reason the robot's stopping. I'm now going to ro load the robot in to the right hand, to the outside of a corner. So as you see, whenever it's on the outside, it gets around the corner. I can reset this as many times as I like, and the robot will always make it around the corner. However, if I reset the robot to the inside of the corner, you can see it can get it gets stuck every time. Doesn't matter how many times I try, the robot will always get stuck. So the problem is that when the robot comes to the inside of the corner, this inside sensor is telling it to turn, and then as it turns, the outside sensor clips the corner, and this tells both wheels are now being told to be off and therefore the robot fails. To fix this, you have to redesign your robot so either it can cope with this situation or so it has some other sort of sensors that will line it up so it's always presented to this corner in the same fashion. Let's try and redesign our robot now. Okay, so here's my solution to the problem. As you can see, we've got the same two sensors on the outside, just like last time, for turning the robot around the corners. We have these extra two sensors in the center. Now, these are here to line the robot up with the, with the line, so it's always presented to a corner in the same fashion. Let's see how this one works. So we're around the first two corners successfully. As you can see the robot's no longer bouncing from side to side on the line. It's now centered. This means that every time it's presented to a corner it's presented in the same fashion and therefore it'll always complete it. Here's the first time it failed and it's passed this corner successfully. One more corner to go and we've completed a lap. And there we go, a completely successful robot. I'm now going to leave the simulation running for an hour, we'll come back to it, and we'll see how a robot's performing. Okay, so our logic bot's now been running for an hour, and as you can see, it's still following the line just fine. With this design, which helps line it up to the corner, this means that this robot is now 100% reliable, and it'll work forever. Hopefully you've enjoyed the tutorial. If you've got any more questions, please post them in the comments below.